So I like I, I had to call them over. They had to unhook me and go into the bathroom. And like it was taking an abnormally long time. Uh, I think the actual heart monitor it it's always sending. So I'm trying to jerk off in this hospital gown and, and it's just like not happening. And there's a knock on the door. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Plegaranos, are you okay? I'm like, uh, yeah, Maybe. I'm, well, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, fine, I'm not sure yet. Just keep him down by your side. And I'm like, I'm looking straight ahead, but this guy's, what is he looking? Is he watching? So I looked over at him and our eyes met. <laughs> and I felt so fucking powerful. <laughs> <laughs> The mustache. That's, <laughs> trust me. Play. Close your eyes. Play it back. It'll sound normal. Yeah, your style really is '90s porn producer, Fuck like, yeah, or man. hipster porn producer. <laughs> Dude, it works. <laughs> the man has spoken. We shouldn't have smoked before this. No, uh, no kidding. <laughs> it is millennial stoner, but like, I've been laying off smoking a bunch. Like, so this is like. I'm always a little high, but like, yeah, no, no, obviously, you know, so, but I expect nothing less. Andy Plagenos is back, everybody. Hey, what's up? Hey, you. See? Thanks. Good bit. Yeah. <laughs> good bit. It's a good bit. I, I, I like that you it. stick to it. I saw that you both were kind of uncomfortable with it. No, so, we, we uh, had some technical difficulties. We had to restart, but I no, like that you stuck to your same intro bit. I'm too much of a narcissist <laughs> to allow that it was something else that you were responding to. It had oh, no, to be fine. me. It's fine. How you so, doing, buddy? Hanging in there, my man. What's mm. up with you? I'm good. I'm fine. I'm good. Uh, I, uh, I I went to the gym today. Good for you. I fucking went to the gym. But that's I great. Went in the morning. What What did you do? Cardio? Or? Yeah, I did like you know you do like. Here's the thing. Like it's the only. I'm not like. I was telling Bridget Cavanaugh this. She read it on the other day. I'm like I'm not like. I quit smoking, so like I didn't want to fucking. <laughs> I was like, I got to stop. And I got like, people don't tell you the nicotine withdrawal is really bad. Right. So all of a sudden I'm like, like there was a couple of weeks ago where I'm like, I really want a cigarette. And then like my right. sister was like, why don't you just try working out? And I go, uh, all right. And I was just like, really wanted a cigarette. So I did like three miles on a li- on an elliptical. And right. then I did like a basic weight lift thing. Yeah. And then I didn't want a cigarette. And I was nice. like, fuck, I'm going to be one of these gym queefs now, aren't I? <laughs> like, <laughs> Ain't nothing like, wrong with that. I, I was maybe not. That. I have ADHD. I'll probably get bored of it in the next two days. I went through a very gym heavy phase. And, yeah. uh, uh, we kind of alluded, we were talking about it earlier. Is, yeah. uh, I, I used to work out very heavily. Yeah. And uh, like, turns out I was taking um, steroids. At one point. Yeah, you were talking about this before. I didn't even, like, I didn't realize or anything is my... Wait, you didn't realize it was steroids? Well, because this was 1998. Okay. I packed on 30 pounds of muscle in that year because I I got stationed in Korea and I was living with this guy who was absolutely a type A personality, huge dude. Uh, That can be tough. Uh, Uh, He actually did, like, that low-level professional, like, local professional wrestling around, like, where uh Wait, Biel- really Biel Air Force Base was. Cool. Yeah. Then he took up uh Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he competed while he was in the Air Force. What was he an MMA and shit? He got way into MMA. He lives in Vegas now. What's this dude's name? Ha- House of Ryu, which was okay. a, a dojo for a while. I don't think it exists anymore, but that's he cool. Was Do they also have House of Blanca? Is that like a Street Fighter dojo or something? I, I think House of I'm sorry, I'm such dude, a dork. That would be fucking you know what, in like the real world, like like, let's make in my fighter. head that's what that's yeah, what no that would be like a detail you know what i'm yeah. saying like just be like yeah it's like we have to take down m bison what yeah, <laughs> but what he would do is uh this guy would watch and he would tape interviews with like mark mcguire and sammy sosa okay pause them write down the names of the fucking and he would just take them and he would get his guy in like sacramento to send us over whatever they were taking which was legal at the time okay and uh, we were taking it. We it's were not. So you're just Andrews. confessing to a crime now. Well, no, no. They, <laughs> it was. I had finished up with what I like. My supply. Okay. <laughs> when, so funny. There, when the Air Force <laughs> told us it was now a banned substance, mm. and they said we understand people were taking them and whatever. This is a grace period. We won't start testing until X. So I was like, oh, good. I'm going to be completely clean by then, and I was. Uh, but yeah, I got I, like my body changed. Okay, and I was able to carry a lot more weight than I looked like I weighed. So, and okay. that's even true now. Well, 
Well, I don't, I do like, uh, I don't do steroids. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I do like this fucking thing. I do this thing, the uh, magic mind thing. Uh, oh, you know, there's those here to look at that. Uh, mm-hmm. it's like, a. It's like a, one of those natural things. I have ADHD and stuff. Can I have this? Yeah, you can have that. I'd love um, to try it. Yeah, I'll do it with you. Um, so, like, I got this, like, it's like a mental shot, essentially. Like, I have ADHD and stuff. So, like, focus is, like, an issue and, 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 and shit. So, yeah. I try to, like, look. And I don't like taking, like, a lot of the hardcore medication for it just because, yeah, suck it down. Oh, suck it. Th- just yeah, all just suck the whole down? thing down. There you go. Honestly, that, that's a great taste. Yeah, a dude. friend of mine sent me this. And um, you know when something tastes like it's good for you? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It tastes like it's good for you. Like that, it is. But like, yeah, I'll suck it down too. This will be interesting. Yeah, helps like reduce stress and all that stuff. Uh, it's right. cool, and it's actually like I did it for like three days straight when he gave it to me. Right. And in the morning, and it worked. And again, you know. It, it, it's one of those things where uh, anytime someone tells me something natural is going to like help you focus and like like really help, like like reduces stress and all that stuff, like you never want to believe it right away because it's like, well, it doesn't have any of the hardcore drugs in it. You know, well, I'm you always know. I'm always worried that I'm going to be like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, like yeah. with most of the stuff that's out there. Yeah, exactly. So, but this, I mean, it. I, 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 you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I was punching through walls, but I definitely <laughs> felt no, but I felt more focused. No, 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 you that's... know, it definitely like, uh, like I definitely feel like I, I'm a little more focused and right. I, I felt a little less stressed because I have a lot of anxiety to begin with. So honestly, anything that anybody says to me that they're like, this is going to help reduce it. That isn't basically <laughs> crystal meth, which is what the other alternative is or right. Xanax, you know, cause a lot of that stuff just makes me, you know, sloppy. But I, you know, if I do something like this, it, I, I can feel that it helps. It's yeah. not like a laser cocaine focus, but you just feel like less, the world feels a little less big. Right. You know, so, uh, yeah, it's cool stuff, man. Like I said, I'm just trying to be a little, I mean, I, again, like it's, it's always an uphill battle being healthier because like, oh, you no. know, I still go out and drink, right. you know, but now I'm just drinking vodka cause there's no carbs. <laughs> Everybody makes fun of me. Oh dude. Yeah. I, I'm so happy. I don't drink anymore. It's, it's just. How long have you been? I met you. You were still drinking. How yeah, long did yeah, you not yeah. drink? Uh, it was after the heart attack, pretty much in yeah, two thousand. Right. It's so crazy. When I came into comedy, like everybody was just having heart attacks. Like there's fucking so many heart attacks in this in the world. Well, it was so funny comedy. because you had Billy had his first. Yeah. And we actually were. Um, I met Billy after he got his heart attack. I think. Really? Mm. Uh, I don't think I was good friends with them until after the like. Well, I, I guess that's 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 completely plausible. But because he and I had just really started hanging out and trying to do stuff, and so he, I had kind of an in at Knock 'Em Dead, the podcast that I'm on on Fridays. That goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sorry, I was just very focused on no, you. No, must no, be no. The, no. Must be the magic mind. <laughs> well, then I got focused on you being focused on me. But uh. So we, we, Jack Adam, I was just telling Brendan Ryan this, the, uh, oh, Friday Brendan night. Ryan's great. He was at six and stones. Yeah. Uh, and you were there too on Friday. Yes. It was, great, it was show. great show. Yeah. Amazing great show. show. Everybody did great. Um, but, uh, that Jack Adam had written two scripts. I had written one and it was going to be audio only. And like a radio we, thing. It was going to cool. be like a radio thing. And, and like, we did, you know, we had ideas about maybe getting them animated or, not doing that and just because at the time talking about trying to make govs a 24 hour thing yeah yeah and like that they would actually play bits we we were trying to like generate a lot of content, content yeah so that they it was almost like mtv or the old comedy central yeah where they would play there would always be something on right except oh. between midnight and 4 a.m when it was just girls going wild commercials right. that i could jack off to but they but in the very early comedy central it was it was like mtv with like a video they would take like a, a almost like on Sirius. You'll listen to a bit, yeah. but they would show it to you, and they would give you all the information in the bottom left corner, like they did on MTV. Yeah, yeah. Um, fuck, why did I go that far? Yeah, that? I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> You're talking about 24 hour thing content. Oh, with oh content. So uh, Jack Adams shouldn't have smoked. No. <laughs> See, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I blame you. Uh, <laughs> No, I can't. I'm not really. Do you not remember it anymore? Is it that I? I no, really no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Now I'm uh, uh, scratching at it. What were we talking about? Oh, the 24 hour news thing. Jack Adam, you're making content. Yes. <laughs> so we're. Uh, that was the day. 
That shit works. It's <laughs> a good ass win. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Like immediately. <laughs> like I am, I'm all like <laughs> but I don't have any of the fucking recall. <laughs> like, this is great. This is what stupid people are like. Huh? <laughs> I love this. Love you, Eddie. You're the best. What are you saying? You're making content with Jack Adam. Yeah, no, no, no. I know, ago. I know. And and that's, so that's the day that Billy was actually had. Well, he probably had been having it for a while, but that was the day where he was like, "I'm gonna go to a walk-in." I'm like, "Yeah." What do you mean uh, he'd been having it for a while? Yeah. God, it's he hadn't. Been, well, once that's like when you hear that's like when you hear a story. It's like he was shot for three days and didn't notice. No, <laughs> it was once the symptoms, once he started like like the doctors and everything would go. Were you feeling this? Were you feeling that? He had all of the slow motion. You know, it's never just like bang. Like even my heart attack. Even though my heart attack like came on. Yeah. Like I had a ton of the fucking symptoms of somebody who's about to have a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. uh so Billy had his, got out of the hospital. Then I think it, I th- it was, it's always like, it seems to me a very short amount of time, but I think it's about a month later. Okay. I had mine. I had mine in November, uh, four days before my, um, my 42nd birthday. Okay. Uh, 43rd birthday. No, oh no, 44th. Because I, I would always say my grandfather had his first heart attack at 44. Oh, okay. So I beat him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Right. <laughs> I, I really only would tell that joke to him. He thought it was hilarious. Yeah, I can tell. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not really polished. Um, uh, uh, you know, it was just so, so you had yours. Who else had a heart attack? So then when I was getting out of Stony Brook, I was walking the unit because they want you to be able to walk around before they release you. Yeah. And uh, Sophia Gerlach was there. Do you really? remember Sophia? Yeah, I remember vaguely. Yeah, yeah. And her the, and her husband, who you when she did comedy, he would come to pretty much all her shows. Oh yeah, she was old, like yeah. older than us. Yeah, not older, but um, matter of fact, that's Nick Wilkinson. We I mean, shout out Nick because Nick always shares your show. Oh yeah, Nick Wilkinson's the best. Uh, one time, Sophia Gerlach's next to me. We're about to like I, I think it was a contest something but i don't know i might have hosted it and uh nick wilkinson goes up and she goes she says to me uh oh who's he because i was like oh i really want to listen to him and she goes who's he and i'm like i he's he comes to the mics uh just be prepared for the most awkward six minutes of your day That's funny as shit. But it was so, but, but that's it. You know, it's so funny. Like he's so fucking good. But anyway, Sophia, I see Sophia there. And like, I actually went into her little curtained area mm-hmm. and was like, uh, Oh my God, what the fuck are you doing? Here? And uh, cause of course I had like, post- just, I just imagine you walking around and just like a ro- like, like, like Ace Ventura. The- yeah. Well, the hardest thing was, like, Hey, uh, oh, you're here too. Like when I tried jerking off. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was like always like a good jerk off story here. Well, I was like, I gotta, go, I gotta go to the bathroom, and I go into the bathroom, and I'm, I was, I was excited. You just using your imagination? Yeah, I yeah. was fantasizing about the nurses and 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 everything. Not that any of them were particularly hot. They just because they weren't, it fit into the realistic end of the fantasy. Yeah. Like she's just going to come and start jerking me off. Kind of. I get it. Yeah. You, you're, you're making a little movie in your head. Right. So I'm like, all right, I, I got to, and I'm like, your all right, dialogue I go like to the I bathroom do, or, <laughs> uh, no, it's usually just fucking and <laughs> no, no, just fucking so, no time for plot. Dr. Jones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I, like I, I had to call them over. They had to unhook me and go into the bathroom and like, it was taking an abnormally long time. And after a while, the things start alarming because they've been disconnected, right? Mm-hmm. And but there's also like the I think the actual heart monitor it it's always sending. So I'm trying to jerk <laughs> off in this hospital gown with all this shit hooked up to me, like all the and and it's just like not happening. And there's a knock on the door. Uh, excuse me, Mister Plaganos, are you okay? I'm like. Uh, 
Yeah, Maybe. I'm, well, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, you, I'm not sure yet. You know that. <laughs> you know when you're jerking off when you're a kid and your mom knocks on the door and is like, yeah, and and you 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 know you're breathless. Yeah. But you have to like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm just. Otherwise, I'm okay. No, I'm otherwise, lifting weights. It's right. fine. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm totally, I'm totally fine. But you have to like conjure that like it's okay. Yeah. Uh, kind of voice and uh, uh, like that's just your monitors are going off and everything and I'm like I, no, I just I'm okay I'll be I'll be out in a second I'll be out. and uh, and then you have to sit there and calm yourself so that you can fucking uh, go back and get hooked up to the things and then not like come out with the crash card and kill you oh my god so that uh, I remember my best friend when I was in the hospital. This for the my appendix was the lady that came in with the drug cart. She was the nicest lady in the world. <laughs> I'm like, she goes, "What's happening?" I go, "I'm having so much anxiety." She's like, "You want some Ativan?" And I'm like, "Fuck yes!" Nice. Like, <laughs> if you're gonna give it to me, yes. I will say the most erotic thing that happened to me in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the way you said it, since we're on the said subject, it, you said it like the sleaziest. <laughs> you're like the most erotic thing I've ever had, like a shitty penthouse it's letter. The mustache. That's. <laughs> Trust me, play close your eyes, play it back, it'll sound normal. Yeah, your style really is 90s porn producer Fuck like, yeah, or hipster porn producer, dude. It works, <laughs> I get so much <laughs> gash. Yeah, um, but I had to get a cardio, like a like a sonic, basically. And I, yeah, I had to, I was laying on my left hand side, right? And so there were two of these texts that came in. And uh, one was like young and blonde and and like petite. Okay. And the other one was like Latina, and she like she was curvy, but like they both were very attractive. And they're both different, so it's you're like you're like your weird brain's like selection. Cool. So now the, the 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 blonde is a trainee, and so she's she she's. And starting you tell me you don't like plot in your fantasy. <laughs> well, this isn't fantasy. This That's happened. what I mean. It writes itself. This shit yeah. happened. I'm like. And so she's like, she's like, and it's very unsure feeling. And then I feel the, the, uh, the older Latina, uh, put her hand over the other one's hand and suddenly, and it's now both of their hands on this fucking thing. Right. And they're like going around and I'm like, oh my God, What's happening right I, now? I have such a fucking erection. And I'm like, <laughs> how if they, and you're like, please don't. Don't see this right now. No, <laughs> yeah, like this like, is. Please, just you're just. What you on your side like this? Yeah, so I'm like you away just, from like, them. Up, you're like, just don't. Uh, can uh, you uh, uh, leave the room, please? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I, you know, I gotta like, how am I gonna like flip over and and not like be completely obvious? But they're also probably saying things like, "Do you want me to show you how to do it?" Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, you're... see, it's you gotta get it in there. <laughs> You got to get it in there. And sometimes it wants to hide. Yeah. Don't let it hide. Sometimes, sometimes it likes it when it's rough and you're like, what the fuck? You got to, sometimes you really got to get in there. That is a bathroom place. I'm like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> it was like a Benny Hill style fucking. <laughs> my like, God. Oh my God. I yeah. never had any kind of experience like that. I got anxiety <laughs> that the, I remember there were like, there was like three sassy black nurses and I was just afraid that they were making fun of me because I had so much anxiety. I'm like, they're probably saying so many funny things about me when right. I'm not looking. And I'm like, they're probably saying stuff like, there goes Leaky Joe. Yeah. You know, my God Skinny damn. dick. Yeah. I think they probably. No, they never saw my dick. Oh. I just shit the bed a lot. So I was well, like. Right <laughs> yeah, Leaky Joe. I had to, I told you, I, I've said this before, but I had to drink that shit that you're supposed to light up your insides. I had to get a, oh, yeah, whatever yeah. it was. I don't remember. It was yeah, yeah, scan, yeah. whatever the fuck. But they're like, oh, don't worry. You can't really, it's not meant to be digested. So it'll go right through you. And I didn't process that until 1 a.m. when I woke up out of my anesthetic coma. <laughs> Thought I had to fart and just shit my pants. Yeah, dude. That's a great. It was fucking mortifying. Yeah, but shut the fuck up. That's like the greatest feeling ever. Not, no, because I'm just, because I had to like. No, in that moment, before you have. Oh, before, before I realized sh it was shit. Before shame, <laughs> before shame cloudies what should be an enjoyable fucking moment of your life. <laughs> When you fucking shit and you're like, yeah, I'm letting that out. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, that feels amazing. Yeah. And it feels amazing because it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do believe that we should shit ourselves on a regular basis just to fucking have that moment of enjoyment. It's funny you say that, Andy, because our new sponsor is Depends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you like to shit yourself whenever you feel like depends? Like, like me and Andy? <laughs> depends. Depends. <laughs> well, we're hey, such you hacks. You actually led, led right into we're good such to- hacks. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm going to say depends no matter what Joe says. <laughs> oh shit, he's making sense. <laughs> now it makes sense when I say depends. <laughs> he asked that question perfectly. And that, my friends, is how you dissect a bit. <laughs> from two low I would say Z level comedians <laughs> like whatever level we're on no, it's, it's the like, bottom it's, floor it's like double letters GG we're the we're GG we're the oh yeah that guy that's around right. <laughs> that's who we are <laughs> um but uh what the fuck are we talking about now that we're talking, oh shitting my pants that's right <laughs> no but that was um that was like the last yeah I remember that was like a, that, that sucked I never had like any kind of like and there were like hot ner- there was I, you know what? I had hot dentists. Something about that. I remember oh, when point, I was young. She, when yeah. I was no, this was like when I was like twenty five. I remember there was just the hottest. She was the hottest, and she was very nice. And I was always just like, like I would always like look at the ground and I'm like, God, you're just like something about like the ponytail glasses in the scrubs combo. I don't know what it is. So my last physical before I left the air force. I went in. I had actually said to them, listen, my father is a diabetic. My brother just found out he's a diabetic. Can we test this and whatever? But they came in and they were had to check for testicular cancer. Yeah. And I had the hottest doctor. She was a lieutenant and she had the ponytail <laughs> And she, but she was like smoking, like she was just sexy and <laughs> you, everything. When you're just like, oh, you got to be examined. You're like, I should go to the bathroom and just fluff up a little bit. Oh, like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm like, oh God, this is terrible. I should have shaved. Uh, and uh, stretching it out. Like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> but they had to have somebody present. Okay. To, 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 so there's no, like, nobody can say anything in either direction. So there ended, there was this senior airman, a young man. And, uh, you know, where are you looking? She's working your nuts. Where are you supposed to be looking? Like, like I don't know. That, like, have your hands on your hips yeah. and looking down. Presentable. Like every, <laughs> like every 70s porn Standing star. Like Superman. Getting, like, a, <laughs> getting a blowjob. Yeah. Just um, put, you put the one hand behind your back. Uh, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, so I was very conscious of where my hands were. So I'm like, just keep them down by your side. And I'm like, looking straight ahead. But this guy is... What is he looking? Is he watching? So I looked over at him and our eyes met. (laughs) And I felt so fucking powerful. (laughs) It's like the most powerful I've ever felt in my entire fucking life. (laughs) What's the song playing in your head right now? I think I jerked off in the parking lot. Just to the idea of it. It was like... (laughs) I was like, I can't walk around with this kind of poison in me. <laughs> this level of poison, I'm liable to hurt somebody. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. <sighs> yeah, that was no. bad. I don't know. I never. I always my uh, my my uh, when I had my shoulder, my orthopedic surgeon was smoking hot. Oh, that's she so was great. like the. F- it, it, I just I remember like being all hopped up on it, like, like, like the drugs and everything right. like, or coming out of the anesthetic. And I'm like, she didn't see my dick. Did she? Like, I was like, right. just one of those things where I was like, I'm going to keep my underwear on because she was doing the surgery. I'm like, I don't, know fucking see my, I don't know how this works. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Uh, you know, like if it's according to that song, but it's all like, connected. And again, like, I never know <laughs> because she was like, I had to go in for like uh, follow up appointments afterwards. And she was like, you do comedy. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, she's like, oh my god, I want to come to one of your shows, and I'm like, I, I, you can come to my show, it's just fine. I, I'll, I'll, I'll buy a private ticket. Show. It's like private I don't show care for you. She's like, I bring my husband. I'm like, you can have sex with him in front of me. I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't fucking as long care. As I can just watch. I just need <laughs> to see your face, actually. God, yeah, no. But she was, she was like <laughs> extremely attractive. It was crazy. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, like, which is, and, and I just want to be clear. I never acted. I never said anything or anything. No, this is like, just a scenario that you're in. It, it just like when and it's usually after the fact where it was like what why was that so that's now so erotic in my head like 
Because it's 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 like I think it's it, it, there's a normalcy to it, but there's also like a weird fucking middle ground. What do you mean? Well, the idea of, of random sexual encounter is probably attractive in some form or way to most right, people. Right. Like in, in, in what what that means for them. That Not, it's yeah. a fantasy. There's whatever your fantasy may be. Yeah, right. That because fantasy can be like I don't want this ever to actually happen. Yeah. Oh God. If an actual porno thing happens to you, that sounds annoying right, a like lot of times. Cuckold gangbang. Yeah. Ugh. Great, to, <laughs> great to watch. <laughs> great to watch. I don't want to live through it. that. Yeah. You ever think, like, I've ever asked myself, I'm like, I wonder if I could actually be in an orgy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I could do it. I actually knew a guy who was a porn producer that I'd grown up with. Yeah. And uh, somebody, you know, we lost touch with, but when I uh, first got home from the Air Force and like. <laughs> Best friend was home from the Marine Corps. He's just like they call me. They call me Dirty John now. Actually, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you know, and it's funny because he has a real vanilla name, but I don't. I, you know, I, don't, I know how the world works, I'm, so I'm not even going to put it out there. Yeah. But we cornered him one night. At, we were out at a bar, and uh, my actually was my best friend who was like, "Hey, I've always wanted to be in the business. What do I need to do?" And he said, "All right, well, I'll tell you what the screen test at my company is." Is you gotta come in, uh, you gotta be soft, get erect, jerk yourself off, and then we time how long before you can get yourself hard again. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't fucking do that. <laughs> so wait, so you had, so the way that you audition, I bet it's in front of people. Too. I kind of get it. It's like, uh, Like, like speed testing a car, I guess, I guess, as they're looking at it. I mean, it's still mortifying. I would never do that. Yeah. I would I, never do that. You know? I, I I don't know. I guess it's almost like watching gymnastics. Like, I don't know. And then the Olympics just or whatever. Like, I don't fucking know what was that. Just staring at your dick just like, all right, start it. It's not until, like, 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 like just now. just looking at a stopwatch and you're just trying to get hard again. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Well, that's like, what I'm saying. It fucks with you. So, yeah. so like, if you're on a movie set or whatever, like, you're, you're at ready to go. At least put my head in, like, a box where it's just porn surrounding me with, like, noise-canceling headphones on. And yeah. don't even tell me the people in the room. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you have to fucking be able to have that kind of control over yourself. Yeah. Like, like that's, that, which is, uh, well, I know the, I could I mean, do it. like, the... Like the thing with porn actors too. Like if you just if you've ever gone down the rabbit hole and like and like like any like legitimate interview, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like legit. There's like real interviews with people out there, like a Lisa Ann or like a Sarah J. I know my shit. <laughs> like talking about the industry part of it, it's right. actually kind of fascinating. Yes, no, absolutely. I immediately jerk off to them afterwards, but when I watch, but like it's actually kind of interesting. The, and I'm not even talking about like the. I'm talking about the genuine like the, the by the books nature of how this this business operates. It's right. actually kind of crazy. Well, it's, it's also funny that that to me you have to do a lot of gymnastic shit because you're at the end of the day you are a performer, right? You know, it's a and it's a it's, a, it's almost dance. Uh, <laughs> we're really, we're really classing up fucking on film right now, aren't we? Like, I, 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 have to just, I have to justify how much I watch we're it. So fucking, we're just sound like such fucking film nerds. It's like, well, you know, the production value really does matter nowadays. It really does. I'm it's not going to, I'm not going to blow ropes to something that doesn't at least have good lighting. Like <laughs> big tugboat ropes. Yeah, big tugboat ropes. <laughs> So there's uh, uh, there's two jobs that I think when you're a kid and you're first like discovering your sexuality or whatever as a straight white dude like I, I can only speak from my own experience but I think through the years I've spoken to enough people that you know it was like stereotypical that be, be like dude I want to become a gynecologist and it's like oh, a, ha, a ha, plastic ha, ha. surgeon that was another one well no the gynecology thing cuz like it's working with pussy but you're like 12 never once said that much saying, right <laughs> you know what i'm saying i was like i want to i, I, I want to be batman i want to be a ghostbuster that's what i was like well this was the sexual stuff yeah. you know what i'm saying no, like, even then uh, i was like i want to be a ghostbuster yeah. <laughs> do you know how hot Andy potts is yeah I'm, especially in the second one anyway yeah. <laughs> i love Andy potts we all love Andy potts um, um i'm just now I'm designing women um well, she's she having a renaissance. Know. Is she? We're just going to sidetrack on Annie Potts. I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, no, I don't give a shit. Annie Potts. She, she was a No, go back to, let's go back to porn. That was, we, we can, we, but we're, yeah, we're, so, we're, we're, we're covering an array of topics on this so, one. But, so. but, but, but like gynecology was this profession that boys would joke about. So I could be more pussy. Uh. But then at some point, the realism of the world is like, listen, it's a doctor. And like, what the fuck? Like it, it, 
you stop you're a being gynecologist. They're miserable people. Right. <laughs> well, I also think that porn actor is another one of those professions that so most dudes you would ask when they're going through puberty. Hey, you know, I would be in porn. Yeah. Like yeah. I would love to do that. But when you're older and you kind of get to watch some of the documentaries and yeah, yeah. shit like that, you're like, oh my God, yeah. thank God I was nowhere near that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, it, it's, it's just funny to me that, that, that those are the two professions I can think of. Never, uh, never thought to myself, ne- never thought to myself, I fuck so good. At what, 18, this would have to have been? Dude, yeah, the confidence The, the confidence, especially yes. because even in like the, like, you know, I mean, it's like, there's like all day shit they do. Like you go oh. take pictures all day where it's just like, you're fucking, but not really. You're just like holding still while you're inside another person. Mm-hmm. And then like, I don't even know how that's a thing. Like, just goes like, all right, take five. They just have to whap your dick against the wall over <laughs> and over again. Cause you got to make sure it stays hard. Can I get a different fluffer you, this time? Or just, you're just in the corner yeah. jerking off, eating catering. Like just, you got to keep it up. Cause we got to shoot for the, the yeah. pictures. For the, you don't just show up, fucking leave. We're waiting for the sun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, imagine, imagine it's like, again, like the production vibe. It's like, no, no, we take our shit seriously here. Okay, you better keep that dick hard until this sun goes down. All right. We got to make sure we have the dusk light or the cum shot's not going to look good on Brianna's face. We're only going to have 15 minutes where we're able to shoot. (laughs) Just the one Stanley Kubrick of fucking porn movies. Just some fucking queef, some queef that kind of looks like Ron Jeremy, but he has a beret on. Like, it's like, no, no, you don't understand. Yeah. Like the deep fucking socio-political implications of the porn industry yeah exactly weighing on him <laughs> it's like you know i have to tell the story mm. of a woman selling cookies door to door and blowing the guy so she, i and have you to know tell. there would be like like the porn headquarter building would be fucking a giant phallic <laughs> the porn headquarter i think it just looks like the legion of doom except pink no it would be it would be it would be a very obvious penis shape I feel you think like. so you go yeah. full i feel like they're a little more I feel like every porn no, studio Kubrick. just looks like, I'm oh, talking Kubrick? About Kubrick oh, you would go this. weird? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that it would be like sort of the exaggerated. You would play into the phallicness of it? Yeah. <laughs> and and like, uh, and I'm sure there would be somewhere where that looked like a vagina, like some building or entrance away to something. Yeah. And and whatever its significance to the story would be. <laughs> and then you get into arguments with your friend, but you don't understand yeah. the vagina, dude. Uh, you don't understand. Because Do I'm, you see how it's it's... The grass is just so. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm, I'm like, I am a huge Kubrick fan. Yeah. I just try likewise. to, you know me, I'm like, I love film. We, yeah. we, you and I kind of have that cinephile thing that you yeah, and we I do. Go we on. like to fuck film. We do. We love, fu- we love big time we cinephile. Just, we just broke down the, just the like, porn industry. We love all films. Yeah. <laughs> but I like Kubrick a lot too, specifically. And you and I always talk about fucking like Full Metal Jacket and all that shit. Hell yeah. Like, which, I just, and I was telling you, yeah, I told my, I was explaining to my daughters and I'm like, well, Charlotte's twelve. I saw that when I was thirteen. Different time. I, I hunted. Ah, I saw that when time, I was like fourteen years old. I'm not saying. Yeah, I'm just like I had to hunt those movies down. Yeah, you know, like nobody like because I was still I was in the era of DVD, but also VHS was still like you could get a lot of movies for cheap. Actually, right. if you still had VHS player, you could get you know all these movies for like five bucks. They're just a VHS right. tape, and it was they were still making them. So you'd go into like all the stores, and I would go in all the stores, and I would get. I'd go in with like 30 bucks. I'd get a stack of these things. They're right. five bucks. And I would get, I would watch these, all these movies that I heard about as a kid, just through pop culture, watch right. the Simpsons. I wanted to understand the Simpsons reference on it. And that, that somebody would be like, Oh, that's from, uh, 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 uh Midnight Cowboy or something right, like that. So right, I would go right, right. I'd see like, all right, Midnight Cowboy. That's from that. Let me see what this movie's about. Yeah. And I would sit there and watch it. I remember the first Tarantino film I watched was Pulp Fiction. Because of, I wanted to under. I always saw that referenced in, as you know, on TV all the time. Right. The the John Travolta, the Jules and Vincent characters with the the suitcase. Right. And I was like, what is that? And I remember watching it, and I was like enthralled by this film. I couldn't have been more than 15, 14 years old. Right. And I had this set up in my basement with like I had this old couch and I had this old TV, like with VHS player because everything was new upstairs. Everything was DVD, so I used to have to watch these all in the basement. 
And I was watching it, and it got to the part in the movie. I was enthralled by this film, and it got to the part where, the, where Bruce Willis has got the sword and like <laughs> let out the gimp. I'm like, what's happening? And, I'm like, and then he opens the door, and it's just this dude's just railing this guy in the ass. And I was like, oh my god! And then he kills him, and it's like the most visceral thing I had ever seen in my life. And I turned the movie off, and I was like, oh my god! Uh, I had never seen anything. Uh, I'm like, what the fuck was that? You were affected. Yeah. I was affected by it. I didn't like finish watching that movie for like a month, and I left right. it in the VHS because I was like so. I'm like, what the fuck? Right. Like that, those are dude. Those dudes are insane. You know, like that's the most insane thing I've ever seen. And finally, I was like, all right, let me finish this movie, and I did. And to this day, I was like, this is one of this is one of the best films I've ever seen. Well, that's, I, I I I always feel very lucky, like in terms of like a Tarantino, where I really kind of grew. I graduated high school, and that summer, True Romance came. Oh, great movie! Which is his the first script that Tarantino. Had yeah, made. that was the one that he was. He actually shot a little bit of himself, right? But like trying was, to get it. Yeah, but it was yeah. Tony Scott or, or? Uh, it was Tony Scott. Yeah, so Tony Scott. Yeah, great movie. It's I, fucking I, amazing. I just did a scene from that in my acting. And, class. and I was seventeen when that came out. And then uh, that's that's a good movie to see at seventeen, dude. It was fucking because amazing. Clarence is such a fucking. Uh, and I was the main character. It's um, Sonny Chiba. Yeah. I love Sonny Chiba. Street so Fighter. the whole fucking the whole setup. The beginning of the movie is he's at a Sonny Chiba marathon. Talking about how he would fuck Elvis. Uh, and I'm like, monologue. I was into all of this same shit. I'm like, they wrote this about like this character I see myself as. Yeah, yeah. That I'm not, wasn't such a, actually such a, No, I think I think that's a very identified Alabama too, for the record. Oh, and you know, oh my I think God, a lot Patty of girls, Arquette is just. Oh God, she's so. You want to talk about hot in a movie? But the uh, shot of her in the pencil dress with the sunglasses and just the bra, and uh, I'm like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like, uh, just she's uh, like a polka dot. Uh, uh, but uh, even pencil now, skirt. like, I, like I, like even now, like I just see Patty Arquette, and I'm just like, she is amazing. Yeah. So even to, and I know, like, like people change and bodies change. Yeah. Maybe this is me getting older. Well, it's not Nicole too. Eggert, like how she is now. Like, <laughs> right? But he, it like, like just so. But then. Reservoir Dogs came out like right when Reservoir uh, Dogs is like one of those movies. I was in Hope that, House. Yeah. That, so it was like a year or so after that. And then Pulp Fiction came out right when I joined the Air Force. Yeah. But you, Jackie Brown's one that I'm like the year before. Well, that was when I was full on in the Air Force. So you, did you see that later? Or did you see that in theaters? Uh, Jackie Brown? Yeah, Jackie Brown. I saw that later. I, okay. uh, Pulp I love Fiction that movie. I saw in the theater. Reservoir Dogs I saw in the theater. True Romance I saw in the theater. <laughs> Carantino's good. At, he makes cool. You know, like oh, he's yeah. very good at making like his characters are, are always in a way that they're just, they're just, he's just as cool very well. Yeah. Like I always point to Jamie Foxx and Django Unchained. I'm like, that dude is cool as fuck. <laughs> like he just is like, it, well, it, 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 it feels earned. He like earns being cool in it too. I feel goes, like we started going down this road because we were talking about seventies movies. Oh yeah. Yeah. You and I were actually talking and about that before the, on Tarantino from those seventies. Well, it was like fourth generation people in Hollywood. Hollywood had been around for, well, you have to think about the timeline of, of, of film, especially like with the, th Starting with the silent film era, which is what the twenties into the th little bit of the thirties into the twenty into the thirties, yeah. yeah. And then the, when once sound happened, I mean, movies weren't. I mean, there's a reason why they call feature length as a term because they're used to just feature length was like this is going to be. I think feature length is actually technically an hour, or at least that, that's or what at they least considered an at hour that time, or something like that. Right. But that you know because that would be one type of film you can go and see, especially when they started doing sound and stuff. Well, what it used to be is you'd buy a ticket, you'd yeah. go in, you'd, you'd see newsreels. You'd see cartoons. Yeah. You'd see serials. You then you. This is the feature presentation. Yeah, exactly. That was the whole thing. You'd go and yeah. that's how you watch TV. Yeah, that I was mean, that was TV. You'd go to the theater for the day. I always like. I was so jealous of my grandparents describing movies when they were kids. Yeah, well, that's so. Yeah, and then you go to the 30s and the 40s is when they really started to. They were like, we're gonna make movies. I I, I always felt like they started to do a lot of ambitious stuff around that time. Right. And in like 30s and the 40s is when the sort of movie star celebrity thing really started to take shape with like the Clark Gables of the world. Well, uh, I think that the 70s is now the 50 years. Yeah. It's been around for 50 yeah. years. Hollywood. 70s was the time of artistic freedom. Right. They it were was, just, they, but it was because so was the 80s, but it was also the time of abundance and oversaturation. But in the 70s, you had all these dudes like the Coppolas and, and like, um, Spielberg and yeah, you had young, film, all these, these film school. Yeah. Like this, this was like second generation coming out of film school, which was a relatively 
newish thing. Yes, it was a completely because people don't realize thing. how you, film is still a young medium. Yeah, it, as crazy as it may seem, and how fast it's still a relatively young medium. As print has been around forever, all that 1400s. stuff. You know, so it's like. It, it, and and then live theater has been around even longer, right? Or or just as long, rather. You know, like it it's it, it's the only, but it's so film and really visual art, uh, visual motion art is really that's such a one of my who am I? What, visual motion what? art? Fuck yourself, Joe. Well, I, I always like to movies. <laughs> film uh, combines all of the arts, yeah, like literally all of the yeah, specialties, can, right. yeah. and 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 puts packages them into one, and that's why the Oscars. Like, like you have all these people and who they thank and whatnot and how it's the director that they're thanking for the yeah. most part, because the director is the one like, I want to use that guy. Yeah. It's, you're supposed to take this idea, give it a vision. Right. You know, that's why it's so in the seventies. You got, I mean, Godfather part two, you know, it's I think well, that's 72. Yeah. You know, uh, dog day afternoon, which is one of my fucking favorite movies. Fucking. T- and then you have like, the, kiss me the, the, when I'm the, fucked. I like to get kissed. Taking a Pelham one, two, three. Yeah, there was a lot of, uh, chances they took assault too. on precinct 13 but you were starting to see the horror genre especially towards the middle th- part really yeah. the thriller genre break away from horror yeah and become its own thing and be really yeah. become its own thing in the 70s it became the, less gothic yeah the, too. it became okay to do a thriller film that wasn't just a gothic thing but i also want to say that there were earlier films that definitely were moves in that direction yeah a lot but of I orson welles early stuff Orson Welles or uh, Kiss of Death or what's Kiss the Touch of Evil. Play Misty for me, like yeah. Well, that's 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 uh that's the seventies. I thought that was that sixty seven or sixty. Yeah, I might play be Misty wrong. for me is Eastwood, right? Yeah, that, the sixties. It might Chris, be. Can the you look that up? Uh, but um, and then there was there was another one. Um, shit, and I can't remember. It was a slasher film, but it was more of a thriller than slasher. There was very peeping little Tom. actual slashing. No, that's like the 50s. It wasn't Peeping Tom, but it was like, it basically was it De Palma? Being, was something De Palma made? I'm not sure. It was a guy, the 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 thing was, like, it was a guy dressing in drag and watching 71, okay. 71, yeah, okay. I, I knew it was like early <laughs> He's got that, he's got the 70s Eastwood cut in this movie. That's why it's yeah. the, the helmet hair. It's where this is where it all started. Jesus Christ, look at that face. But uh the thrillers really started becoming their own thing. And and you had like films started becoming much more accessible to people like Romero. Yeah. And and whatnot, like like the people who were not going to fit into Well there became what was going I mean, on. Arguably, I mean, I think independent film too, and it started in the sixties, but it really started right. to become prevalent in the seventies, especially right. with like some of the I mean, they call them exploitation films, but like if you look at Australia, even like at the time in the seventies, they were putting out crazy shit, dude. Like, oh, absolutely. Th- like, and, and they're about the weirdest stuff. There's a movie called like Razorback, but the way that it's shot is fucking insane. It's right. one of the most insanely like it's hard, like an art house movie, but it's okay. about uh, they took a concept of a killer giant warthog, and then he was able to make it kind of this weird arty thing with like the imagery and like Australia is such a bizarre looking place really. Yeah. So he kind of used that to his advantage when he shot it and made this sort of bizarre film. You know, there's another one. Road games is one starring Jamie Lee Curtis. That's an Australian film. Oh, there's well. a lot of crazy fu- stuff. Well, there. And then leading up to the one, the crossover that everybody knows, which is late seventies is Mad Max, right? Yeah. That's was the one that, that like became 79 mainstream or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And then road warrior was the one that really popped out in America. Like yeah. that, that was Mad Max did well enough where they got the, uh, they could distribute the sequel out here. Yeah. And, but that was the one. And, and to this day, I'm like, that movie rules. Hell yeah. I love, and I love all the Mad Max movies, especially the new one. I'm going to go see Furiosa when it comes out because that looks badass. Um, but like, it's such, it's such a stripped down fucking looking movie, dude. Like even, and, and Miller's such a, George Miller who directed these films is such an insane visual storyteller. Right. You have, nobody knows what he's doing until he's, only he knows what he's doing. There was, when they were making Fury Road, they were like, we had no idea what he was doing. We were getting annoyed. And then we saw the movie and you're like, oh, now it all makes sense. Right, right. You know, it's like a whole thing. And it's, it, 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 so yeah, so that's a big one, Australia. But that's my point is like, there was these sort of independent film was really starting to become prevalent in the seventies. Oh yeah. The Easy Rider, the movie that it basically introduced the world to Jack Nicholson, was a. They were trying to make that movie for years. They were going to do right. it with Roger Corman, but uh, I don't think they ended up going. I think they ended up going a different way. They did it with Fonda and stuff, right? And, but it was that's an independent film. Yeah, you know that's and that all that became very prevalent. And then the eighties came along, and I argue the eighties for horror, 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 horror. 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 Uh, 
Shouldn't have smoked. Uh, Star Wars is an indie film. Star Wars is, is an indie, indie film. That's true. I didn't just read that off a cue card. No, not <laughs> at all. No, it is. Because let's talk about Star Wars for a second, because this is actually very interesting to me. Um, the thing with Star Wars, I'm probably going to get shit for this. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not that it's bad. But it's, Star Wars is, um, is basically, none of those movies were considered a mainstream film. Like all sci-fi all that stuff, that was all B-list. That was right. Roger Corman stuff. They didn't make big name movies. It was always right. like C-list, B, D-list, horror actors always did those. Yeah. TV stars did those. And then Star Wars comes along, takes all those. And technically, yes, isn't it's an indie film. But it, ma it, it made a lot of money, and it's just one of those crazy things where it's like, well... Why did this make? Was it a marketing thing? Did you actually try to put money? I, I, I don't know enough of the history about it, but I do know that up until that point, uh, any kind of sci-fi fantasy movie never really got that kind of mainstream appeal. Well, you can tell what kind of gravitas he got off of making American Graffiti. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is why I would, I would, this is my argument a little bit away from it being an independent film because he had latitude yeah. to do something that, they all, so much so that they all they 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 allowed him to k take the uh, the merchandising. Yeah, on <sighs> it. I mean, think about that. No, but they, they didn't believe they in thought it. Thought that little. So that's what I'm talking about. So what made? But they let him make it. Yeah, the way, because yeah. he had made American Graffiti. And American Graffiti had made a shit ton yeah, yeah. of money. Great movie too. And it's a great movie. And he was now able to make his. You know, he kept on was always moving in the direction of telling this story. Yeah. Right. And so he makes it and they were all like, great. Once he gets this out of his system, we'll show him he's not allowed to do that sort of thing anymore. And he can make another American and graffiti. It, he made, um, you know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah, how business I yeah, works. I kind of get that actually. Like that's, Cause that's, you're right. Why would, if they had, if they believed in it, why would they sign? Cause he did. That's famous. That was, that's I, the, basically how he made money. Right. Was like made. I mean, the movie made money, but it like the way that George up, it, Lucas basically was able to it, be it George never, Lucas it never has an executive have have something backfire that to that magnitude. I think there's a thing about this. You ever watch Toys That Made Us on Netflix? Yeah, I think there's a whole thing about this because yeah. I, I, I believe they go into it and it's like everybody admits is like that was a blunder. We should have split it or something. It was they so gave him stupid. full control. Right. Over all of it. So, and, and it, it, I've said it before, I'll say it again. So if you put Star Wars in anything, people are going to fucking buy it. The, that fandom is just, it's, I think the largest, I think it's, it's, got, it's in the Guinness Book of World Record as the world's largest fan or right. some shit like that. Right. And, and it is. It's, and it's been around forever and they fucking kept it alive. Except my friend Dan, who's like the bleakest Star Wars fan ever, he goes, uh, when they were doing like all the new movies. Right. And like in the, in the middle of them being like, we're going to make all this and we're going to do a prequel to the prequels and we're going to do this and like all these movies that they had planned that eventually they scrapped. Right. Dan was just like, 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 a, like a, my friend Dan was just like, like a, like a, like an old timer at a bar that's just like seen war and he's just like got a cigarette in his mouth and he just goes, yep, Star Wars movie every day until we die. Yeah. <sighs> like, and I'm like, good God, man. When that you put was, it like that. There was a time, because when I, you know, again, grew up with this, I was very young when the movies came out. But, but after Return of the Jedi, I remember because my dad was very into it and would tell us like all these things he read in different places, <laughs> like like he had some teasers or some spoilers before Return of the Jedi came out, because uh, he was exposed to traditional adult media, whereas we were just watching kids shit, which wasn't giving away any spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, it was like, oh, when's he gonna make the next three? And like, oh, well, that was immediately, the thing, yeah. and it was immediately like, oh, the prequel. And I know this is well documented and everything, but I'm talking about like from a fan perspective. Yeah, yeah, of course. That it it, it was like, oh, there's going to be prequels. That's super cool. And I would say it was like uh, probably it was before I, I think I was in junior high. So it was like still the 80s. And we were like, you know what? It ain't never going to fucking happen. It's a, and you know what? And then I, it did. And I was so yeah. cool with it then, yeah. though. Yeah. I was like, you know what? It's not. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That's this. This uh, we'll get to just enjoy these films. Yes. And then they fucking made the next ones, and right away I was like, I don't think this is a good idea. I mean, it, you know, we can say I don't. And have I ever told I, you? I, I'll argue this point. I think there's a. I think there's. 
a lot of cool stuff in the second prequel. Yes, I think there's a lot. There's like a cool spy story in that. Yes, it's it's James Bond. Yeah. It's it's, it's fucking Ewan McGregor. Kenobi. Arguably, it's Ewan McGregor being as cool as he possibly can Absolutely. be. Absolutely, like but oh yes. Unfortunately, uh, how is the army coming? Unfortunately, along? the clone army coming along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, unfortunately, there's like an hour and twenty minutes of just bullshit. Once you cut that out, it's just they have. No, I'm not hating. Sit there and tell me Hayden Christensen and fucking Natalie, whatever the fuck Portman. her last name is, yeah. there was any, had kind, any of kind of chemistry in that movie. There was no there chemistry. There was no chemistry. It was awful. Like, <laughs> Which shows you why Carrie Fisher kissing, uh, what's his name, Mark Hamill, is gross. <sighs> or hot, uh, depending on how you look at yeah. it. <laughs> Much hotter now. Depending on the kind of porn you watch time. nowadays. <laughs> I remember being a and little. She goes, "You're not my stepbrother." I'm like, "All right, I, I'm, I'm in." <laughs> to show you how little I was, I was really angry that they didn't get on well. Like that, that, that. You're like, why doesn't she? Why doesn't she be with Luke? Han Solo is a dirty hippie man, or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Like, <laughs> but you know, at the end of the first one, you're like, "Oh, they're totally hooking up," and like, <sighs> Luke's out. What? what kind of shit is this? Who is this? <laughs> yeah. What is he just gonna do? Walk the earth like Khan from Kung Fu? Like right. I, I didn't because I was that young. I didn't get the anti-hero. Dude, space cowboy rules and all that shit. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. Han is Han. He's space cowboy. Like that's that that dude. And I, that was always my thing with Star Wars because I don't. I, I I like Star Wars, but I just I don't. Jedi suck. Like they're just they're just no, I hear it's you. the worst in my opinion. And uh, I don't like them. But I always said I'm like I always like that idea of like. The scoundrels, all that stuff. Right. Like that shit was always really cool to me. When because I played D and D, I always played a half elf archer or thief. All right, everybody, any any woman that wants I know your vaginas are about to dry up right now, but right. <laughs> we don't have much longer in the episode. Hey, you're already behind. What They're we already got, Chris? dry. Uh, okay, yeah, we got Fitty? some time. We got some time left. Nice. A couple minutes left. But yeah, go ahead. I, I, I was I'm just oh. saying is like that. I think Han Solo was like the beginning of like that kind of cool. Oh yeah, no doubt. And what was well, neat about it was he was kind of a regular looking dude. You know what I mean? Like it, it, as opposed, yeah, and then you immediately get into the, well, the, he looks like every man, but he's the handsomest. Every yes, he's man. the handsomest. It's every kind man. of Robert Redford has. The but I'm same talking thing. in juxtaposition because soon after that, that kind of character became like Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. You well, know what then I mean? you got the Jack. These guys that, yeah, coming the in 80s. to do that's that. What I, mean. yeah, yeah, I yeah. wanted to say something about the '80s. About it is, I actually think the '80s was a very, uh, it was a really weird era for a lot of people Absolutely. in a lot of different ways and like there was a lot of crap but I, I always felt that in certain genres like I think the horror genre specifically there was a lot of creative freedom happening at the time it was the, because because video cassette yeah now video had it opened changed it the up. game technology again disrupting uh, yeah it just changed the fucking game man yeah. it was is one of those things where the introduction of that the fact that you could take the, but also the fact that you could shoot on VHS because there's a whole subgenre of horror films right not all of them are great but they're fun to watch <laughs> you not know? all of any kind of movie is great of course yeah. but I think there was a lot of I mean you think about a lot of stuff from Europe started coming over a lot of like art house horror films like it's like uh, like a Suspiria I think that was like 78 but then like you have like a Phenomena or whatever the hell it was called what was the it's with Jennifer Carpenter or Jennifer Connelly is who it is. Oh, uh, it's like phenomenon or something like that. Yeah. Phenomena. Um, that's a that's a Disney. That's a fucking Muppet lyric. But I'm not <laughs> sure. I was caught up. Huh? What's up? No, it's not labyrinth. No, or something no, like no. That. But that's Jennifer Connelly for no, sure. No, there's like a there's like a I can't remember the name of it. I, which is upsetting because dude. Speaking of hot horror movies, <laughs> the entity. Which one's the entity? That's <laughs> is that the one with the wait 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 wait, wait. is that the one with the fucking supermodel that lives up in the apartment? No, no, no. This is a woman in her. Not the Sentinel. This woman, a single mom with two kids, that these um, spirits start like her sexually harassing, sexually <laughs> harassing her in extreme. Uh, that's a that's a running theme in a lot of horror films like that. It's a lot of the ghosts just being like like, Dude, like I, assaulting people. I was so into it. I was Jesus so Christ! All right, that's all the time we have. Eh. That's it. That's it right there. Dario Gento. Phenomena? Phenomenon. Phenom I think it's Phenomenon. Phenomena. It's a, uh, Dario Gento is an Italian horror director. Some people like him, some people don't, but right. that's, you know, art. You're supposed to be subjective about it. So, but these are great. If you've never seen this, this is actually a great fucking movie. Yeah. It is a great fucking movie. Uh, but I, that's what I mean. Like people could do, you could do messages. You could, you could say something with a horror film. And that's what people learn that I doesn't just have to be, I can actually do something clever and kind of talk a message. There's a great movie called The Stuff. 
uh, written by this guy. Uh, God, what the hell is it? I can't remember, but great, uh, great, great horror director. Directed a lot. I think he directed film one, two, three, or was it film one, two, three or something else? doesn't matter. He directed this movie called the stuff in the eighties. And it's basically all about consumerism. And it's like a good, I know you've, you've yeah. mentioned this to me before. It's a great movie. And it, right. like, it's, it says something kind of cool with it, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, I, it's not, it's not like, and I, I'm not saying that every movie needs to be a soapbox, but the fact that they were like, Oh, horror can be this as well oh, yeah. is a good thing, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I really didn't follow the horror. I'm a nut. Was it. not ever though. Now that I'm older, I really appreciate the 50s stuff. Oh yeah. Those are so much fun. The yeah, the 40s stuff, that's the fucking oh, gross. Yeah. It's great. They have made fake commercial and it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you could. I love eighties horror, dude. It's so fucking crazy and over the top. Yeah, all the effects and everything. Yeah, no, and and I I I had a friend who was very into it. And he had like magazine subscriptions. Yeah, Fangoria and stuff. Fangoria. I, I have all that stuff. He was very into all no, no, that. It's not, they don't even do. I don't think they even do the magazine anymore. No, no, none of those. I have like old issues of it with like the Lost Boys and everything, and like just yeah. stuff that I would read. Well, they, this kid Joe Lynch was huge into that shit. And I was like, I think it's an underappreciated genre. I, I, Especially nowadays with movies like Midsommar coming out and like uh, Hereditary and people trying to make, you know, it really started with Silence of the Lambs when they're well, like, can we make mainstream horror? Coming from old school sci-fi fantasy yeah. geek culture. Yeah. Like seeing everything grow and specialize and break off and all this other shit. Like uh, it's great. Yeah. That, that, that there's a place for people who, love uh like a, a subgenre yeah like horror absolutely i but i like i just it it just it escapes me <laughs> like a mic no i'm trying to think of the last horror movie that i actually was like saw in the theater i think it was the um exorcism of emily rose wow that's a while ago yeah that's like 2005? Yeah. Yeah. 2005. My wife and I, we were dating at the time and we went to it and everything happens at like three o'clock in the morning in that movie. Yeah. There's a whole thing. Cause nothing, it's, it's like, like attached to the town. It's, right? it's a literal witching hour. I right. Believe. Whether it's two or three. Yeah. And my wife, well, my then girlfriend started waking up at three o'clock every morning. So you were like, fuck this. No, this. She was like, she would wake me up. Cause she was like, it's three o'clock. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Are you going to spin? Is your so head going to spin around? Why the fuck did you wake me up? <laughs> you know, like, like that doesn't make sense. So what? It's three o'clock. Oh, it's like the movie. And I, oh, fuck. So we're not, <laughs> we don't do, uh, we horrors. don't do horror anymore because it wakes up at three yeah. o'clock in the morning. But my wife is normally like living with memento. <laughs> like she's incapable of making new memories. <laughs> Like, we need to invest in the She's tattoo got machine. On it. His name is Andy. Yeah. Hello, Andy. Uh, <laughs> like, 50 First Dates is like a how to for us. God. Um, it's the best. Um, all right. We got to wrap up. No, rock it right now. No, we're doing great, man. I, thanks for coming down. I just like yeah, bullshitting. Dude. This was always, Likewise. it's always fun just sitting and talking with you. We, talk, we always talk about literally everything. Yeah. This is this is a great episode. And it's never to do enough time. Too. No, this is a great episode to do shrooms, too. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming out, man. Thanks, bro. Do you have anything thanks you want to plug? Me. Uh, no, just, uh, you know, follow me. I'm at L I N Y R O X on Insta. Sweet. Cause that's Long Island, New York rocks. Yep. So you have the, you're so you've had this since the military, bro. Yeah. Since like um, 98. Everybody knows the same thing. I say the same thing every time. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'm at that Winchell kid 87 on Instagram, uh, at the millennial stoner on Instagram. We're on YouTube on Instagram, the millennial stoner, uh, rock Up productions. Uh, also like share and subscribe. Also watch who the F is Rob white. Shout uh, out Rob tattoo white. show. Rob white rules. Um, yeah. And, uh, for all my dates and shows, follow me on Instagram. Magic line. Check it out. It's it is good um, stuff. Good stuff. We, me and Andy just stared in each other's eyes and was like, give me all the information. <laughs> yeah. Reduce your stress. It's a mental shot. Uh, if you have anxiety, you can help with that. Come and check it out guys. We're actually going to put a link right down here the, with a, a way to buy it. And you can actually use the code Millennial Stoner 20 to get 20% uh, off of purchases with that code. Uh, Millennial Stoner 20 at the link below, magicmind.com. And like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for uh, tuning in.
The millennial stoner outro song. You pack a bowl and sing along. Blah la blah la blah la 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 la. Ba ba blue sheep. Ba 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 ba. This is the favorite podcast of the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama's mother's name is Dalai Mama.